Hi guys and welcome to this, the video on set notation, part of the Year 9 Probability Series. My name's Darren from Ask Guru. really good to see you. I'll get into the content in just a moment, but before I do, can you do me a massive favour? Head to YouTube and subscribe. Turn off notifications if you want to. Subscribing just lets me know that people are actually watching these videos, okay? And it makes a huge difference to me to know that people are actually watching. And of course, you can see in the corner, mapsguru.com. If you go over there, you can actually watch all these videos, download notes, summary books, stuff. Oh, it's free to sign up. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Right, what are we doing in this lesson? We are going to look and understand how to use set notation to describe different sets of data, be able to list sets from a description or a diagram, and be able to interpret symbols using used to represent sets. What does that all mean? Well, we're about to find out now. In our past learning, we've looked at the basics of probability, and in the previous video to that, then diagrams and two way tables. Massively important, but lessons on their own. We're dealing with more and more exciting stuff as we get through. Now, if you haven't watched the videos, again, head over to mathsguru.com or YouTube, and you should be able to find them on there. Rightio, probability sample space. Now, in the previous video, I said that probably one of the most important things there was that little E sign at the top, all right, an epsilon. And the reason being is that says that all of my numbers, all of my probabilities are contained within that box. And generally speaking, we had two probabilities. Now, again, generally speaking, I have seen questions where there are three. Yeah, they were a bit evil, but that's a whole new discussion. But our events A and B, and then we had this overlap that was really, really important. And we could even have had numbers outside of there that basically meant people who didn't have A or B, right? So again, if that's not making any sense to you, go back and watch the video. Now, of course, Barry's been at it again. Good old Barry. We can use all sorts of letters. In fact, four of them to stand for a sample space. And we have S, we have Omega, we have a U, I have no idea where the U come from, and Epsilon, right? So generally speaking, I'm going to write E, which is going to look roughly speaking like that. And so as I said, in a die, if we wanted to list the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, all the possible outcomes, we would actually put them in those curly brackets. Now, again, if you don't put the curly brackets in, oh, it's not right. And the commas have got to be in between. And all of this notation is really, really important. So that is sample space. It lists all the possible outcomes. And then we have something called a subset. All right. Now, a subset is, as it sounds, a set of numbers that actually comes from a larger set of numbers. So if I had my sample space here of A, uh, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, and six, then we could say that an event A could be the even numbers. Well, in that situation, A is a subset of my sample space. Why? Because the numbers two, four, six, and eight appear in my sample space. So subsets, we can use the word subset. Or we can actually use a C. Now, it's not really a C. It's sort of an elongating staple. That's how I think of it. And no one's going to change my mind. Thank you very much. But if we wanted there, we could say that the numbers 2, 4, and 6 are a subset of or contained within. All right, so that C is actually contained within. And in this situation, our set of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now, again, where do we use this? primarily in exams or later on if you do maths at the university because it's important to write the correct mathematical notation. But for you guys, probably in year nine, we're going to use it there to try and trick you because maths is a big fat trick. So if you're allowed to use a summary book, write it in your summary book. If not, just remember that that little thing there is a C4 contains. Yay! What else we got? Oh, sorry, or contained within. Complement. Now, again, as I say here in previous lesson, no one pays me any compliments, all right? Well, because I'm not very good, but we'll leave that to one side. A complement is basically the opposite of. So, as I say here, if we had the event or the numbers two, four, and six that were taken from a sample space of one, two, three, four, five, and six, so again, if I write my sample space of one, two, three, four, five, and six, then if these numbers here are A, that those numbers then which are not A, and again, I'll come back to that in a moment would be given by the numbers one, three, and five. Okay, so the complement of is basically all of the numbers that are not A. Now, as I probably said before, we could write that as not A equals, or we can write it as A with a bar over the top. I've seen all of those. So that is the complement, it's the opposite of. And as I've said previously, if it's raining, 
then it's not raining. If it's snowing, it's not snowing. These are all complements of. The next one is elements. Now, again, in a, mo a moment ago, we had that sort of there was contained within. All right. So that looks like a C, doesn't it? Yes. Guess what an element looks like? Oh, yes. It looks like an E. So again, it's like a paperclip with a line coming out of it, making it look like an E. So in that situation, that would say that the number five is an element of A. And an element basically means one number. So the number five is an element of A. And is five contained within that A there? Absolutely. Now, again, if you want to, you can download these notes from mathguru.com. If I'm not writing enough for you, then by all means, download them, have them with you while I'm going through the video, and then write all over them. Put them in your summary book. That's really what they're there for. Now, an empty set. Uh, yes, I know many of you think my head is empty. That's a little bit insulting. We'll leave that one there. But an empty set is basically where two uh, events don't have any overlap, all right? There's no numbers inside. So, for example, if I said A was the numbers 1, 3, and 5, and I said B was 2, 4, and 6, if I wanted to try and find A intersection B, and I'm going to come back to that in a moment because that's a little bit formal, if I want to try and find out where there is an overlap, where they intersect, in that situation, there wouldn't be any. And I would write that that would therefore be the empty set. You can also write the squiggly curly brackets. But again, we may use that in an exam to try and trick you. And again, that's because no numbers exist in both A and B. There's no overlap. If I was to draw that as a Venn diagram, I'd have the numbers 1, 3, and 5 there. I'd have the numbers 2, 4, and 6 there. I've got all of my numbers in my sample space. And because there is no overlap, right? So again, mutually exclusive. We had all this terminology before. A cardinal number. Now, to be perfectly honest with you, I have absolutely no idea what a cardinal number is. I've put this in here, and one day I'll go and learn. But, okay, we have already met the notation before when we express a probability. So, again, you've got to make sure the probability, and then you write the worded description of what you're trying to do, and then you have some sort of fraction. So, in that situation, the probability of even was equal to a half. So, that could be, I don't know, the probability of tossing a coin. Yeah, because obviously if we toss a coin, we've got heads or tails, the probability is a half. I reckon here that N stands for cardinal number. Let's go with that for the moment. What does that NA equals 3 mean? Well, it means the number of. So I tend to say to my kids, well, PR stands for probability. That's going to be a fraction or a decimal or a percentage. Yeah, N is just a number of. So in that situation, that reads how many numbers are there in A? And it's got three, because if we look at A here, how many numbers have we got in it? One, two, three. Okay, I'm a count, and I like it to count. Now, I said a moment ago, we had another letter. It always worries me a little bit when people say this is an and. Sometimes we can read it as A and B. I'm hoping that you will always read that N that I'm drawing now as an intersection where it overlaps. A intersection B. And again, if you think about the word intersection, what is the second letter? It's an N. So we're looking for an overlap. A lot of people go A and B. Makes me slightly nervous because it doesn't always work that way. All right. So let's just think of that now as where to overlap. And it would be looking for those overlap. Now, if we were looking at a Venn diagram, that would actually be that little section there and just that little section there. Now, I don't know about you, but it might be an idea to start copying in a Venn diagram in your summary book and going, ah, oh, I'm going to start filling in all of the bits and pieces um, as we go through, because that's going to be really, really important. Right. And then we have union, right? So when two people get married, there's a happy union. Hopefully, we would hope there's a happy union. Um, but a union is basically all of the numbers combine. So all of the numbers that are in A or B or both. And that's really, really important. So we would write that as A, U, B. And again, if you think of the word union, what does it start with? N? Uh, it doesn't silly Billy. It's U. Who am I talking to? My three-year-old daughter? I'm so sorry. Silly Billy. All right. A, union, B. That's where there is an overlap, right? So it can be A. Let's call that A. It can be B. Or it can be both. Ah, 
So basically what you want to do there, if you go back to my previous example, is you're adding together all of the numbers in my Venn diagram. So for example, if that had a four in it, and that had a two, and that had a seven, and it stood for the number of, then in fact, I would say that there'd be four, five, six, 13 in total, all right? So AUB would be 13. So if I wanted N of AUB, I would write there 13, because that is how many um, items or what have you in that diagram, all right? Now again, later on we have to be very careful about not doubling up on numbers. So here we go. A number is chosen from the set of positive integers between one and eight. All right, positive, I think that's fairly obvious. Integer is a whole number for those of you who aren't sure, between one and eight, inclusive. And inclusive means it includes the numbers one and eight. So the first thing I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna do a sample space of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now, again, I haven't read the question yet, but I've got a fairly good idea that that's what they're gonna ask me to do. A is the set of odd numbers between one and eight inclusive. So A is gonna be one, three, five, and seven. And what have we got here? And B is a set of prime numbers. Ooh, between one and eight. Now, prime numbers have two factors, yes? I don't like the idea of prime factors being divisible by one in itself, because that means then that one could theoretically be a prime number, depending on how you think about it. But for it to have two factors, the first one that's gonna have two factors is actually the number two. And two is the only even prime factor, so uh, prime number, so two, three, five, and seven. There we go, so those are my prime numbers. Uh, do, 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 do. List these sets. One, the sample space. There we go, already done it, tick. A, already done it. B, already done it. So, mm, fair enough. Draw a Venn diagram. You're gonna turn around and say, but you know the question. All right, maybe I did. Draw a Venn diagram. Oh, look, I've got a Venn diagram already sorted out for me. So here is A, and here is B. So, first things first, I always look for the overlap. Are there any numbers that overlap? Three and five and seven overlap. So that's three, five and seven go in my overlap. What numbers therefore left in A? That would be the number one. What numbers would be left in B? There would be the number two. So I've got one, two, three, five, seven. Are there any other numbers? Well, yes, because obviously I've got other numbers between one and eight that don't fit into those two circles. Where are they gonna fit? outside. So one, two, three, a four is going to go here, six is going to go here, and eight is going to go here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've made sure that all of my numbers are there. ka -ching. There is my Venn diagram. Love these questions. Example, another one. A number is chosen from the set of positive integers between one and eight inclusive. A is the set of odd numbers between one and eight inclusive, B is a set of prime numbers, three, one, eight, inclusive. Now, what do you notice about my Venn diagram here? One, it's missing the E on the top. Two, they're actually just giving me the number of numbers inside. So this one inside the A, the one inside the A isn't actually the number one, although it may well be. It is just saying that there is one number. So here we'd be given N of only A, and N of only B, and N of rod. But anyway, list these sets. A union B. Well, hold on a moment. A union B. Well, actually, that Venn diagram is fairly useless to me because really what I need to do is go back to the one I had before. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to draw an actual Venn diagram with my numbers in it because it's going to make my life a little bit easier. So there's A, B. Sorry about my drawing. What did I have here? I had one. Let's just flick back. Three, five, and seven. Three, five, and seven. We had the number two there four, six, and eight outside, I think. Yes, okay, so that's gonna make my life a little bit easier. A union B. Now actually, if you notice here, I think there's a mistake on my PowerPoint. I think I wanted that to be and. So I'm actually gonna do A and B. Now because it wants a step, it's gotta be in curly braces or curly brackets, and I want where the overlap is. So that's gonna be three, five, and seven. Woo -hoo. Now I'm gonna do A, union B. And if you remember what the union mean, it meant all of the numbers in both circles, including the overlap. So if I look at the numbers down, I'm going to have the number one, two, three, five, and seven. Those are all of my numbers there. A with a little dash. Oh, what does that little dash mean? It is the complement of A. That basically means all the numbers that are not in A. Oh, okay, so that's gonna be in only B 
and outside. So if we look at the ones that are only B, there's only the number two there. And then I'm gonna have all those numbers on the outside. So two, four, six, and eight. Now, if we go back to what A was, if you remember, A was actually the odd numbers. So the complement of the odd numbers should have been my even numbers. Two, four, six, eight, yes, fist bump, or <laughs> fist bump, or whatever. What have we got now? B only. Now that means that there can't be the overlap between A and B, because if it's only B, it can't be shared with A. So in which case, that is just going to be the number two, because that's the only one inside my B. Moving on, we now go to N, A. So the number that are in A, oh, the number in A. Now again, that includes the overlap. And again, if we go back and say, well, the set of odd numbers, we knew that the set of odd numbers was the numbers one, three, five, and seven. So in which case that's just gonna be four. The probability of A. Now probability has to be a fraction. So we're gonna do the number in A, which we already know is four, out of the total number of numbers. Well, that was eight, because we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So four over eight, which is going to give me one half. Yes, right, we want the number, Oh, he says writing an A, the number of A union B. Now, what does it mean by A union B? Well, we've already got that one there, haven't we? We've got this here. We can use how many numbers are in that set? One, two, three, four, five. So that's five. And then what are we gonna do? We want the probability of A union B. Well, it's gotta be a fraction, so it's the number of numbers in A union B, which we've already got, which is five divided by the number of numbers, which is eight, and that cannot cancel down. Do you see how powerful this is? Really, really important and great fodder for math questions for exams. And believe it or not, that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully it's been helpful and you've learned something. If you have, leave a comment below if you're watching on YouTube and just let me know if it was useful or not. Subscribe and hopefully I'll see you in another one of the videos. Take care and please stay safe.